Good afternoon to all of you. I am here to present you our final year project, Prototyping a Functional Behind the Hearing Aid. Our industrial collaborator is Vikramaraj Institute of Speech and Hearing and our medical collaborator is Dr. M.C. Pereira. This presentation includes an introduction, expected deliverables, algorithm implementation, hardware implementation, performance evaluation and, and conclusion of our project. According to World Health Organization, about 5% of world's population have hearing impairments and 9% of Sri Lankans have hearing impairments too. And since there is a lack of local expertise and knowledge of building a hearing aid, we have taken the first step of building a functional hearing aid in Sri Lanka by prototyping a behind-the-ear hearing aid which enhances speech in noisy environments. As our deliverables, we were going to deliver a simple microphones plus receiver model connected to a development board as shown in this figure. As for algorithm implementation, our expectation was to deliver noise reduction algorithm which can, uh, can be adjusted by audiologist according to the patient's requirement uh, and, test, and test those algorithms and the device. Moving on to the hardware implementation, as you can see, uh, we have used two microphones, a development board, a receiver and the battery management module. After thorough feasibility studies, uh, we have selected our main components as shown here, omnidirectional electric condenser microphones, balanced dimensional microphones and this TMS320C5535 DSP development board. And we have used Code Compass Studio development environment for uh, programming our DSP. Moving on to the algorithm implementation. In this block, block, block diagram, you can see the input signal. Actually, in this case, it is two input signals from front and back omnidirectional microphones. And then we use dual adaptive filter method as our feedback cancellation method. After that, we use uh, we use adaptive directionality to further enhance the input signal. Since we are using two microphones, the adaptive directionality method improves the signal by uh, reducing noise. Uh, and we have used adaptive filter method for further noise reduction. And after noise reduction part, we need to adjust the gain of the signal. For that, we have used frequency shaper. And eventually, we deliver the output signal. For the performance evaluation of the algorithm, we have used uh, two objective matrices, matrix SNR and PSQ and two subjective matrix MOS and SRT. SNR, uh, SNR is the ratio of pa uh, signal power to noise power and PSQ is a test similar to MOS which has the rating scale between worst to excellent between 0 and 5. Uh, MOS is the arithmetic mean over individual values to get an opinion on the performance of a system quality. Uh, it also has the rating scale from worst to excellent from 0 to 10. The other object, uh, subjective matrix is SRT. Uh, it is the sound level that a person can identify the speech presenting 66.6% of the cases. Uh, this is a standard test performed by audiologists to measure the uh, hearing level of the patient. When building a hearing aid, feedback cancellation plays a critical role. For this, we have used dual adaptive uh, feedback cancellation among these uh, mentioned uh, algorithms because uh, it is the best algorithm we found according to the literature review. And here is the block diagram of that feedback cancellation method. Uh, moving on to the noise reduction algorithms, we have divided the section into two stages as um, one and two. And for our stage one, we have considered uh, these three algorithms, which use two microphone inputs. And from those three algorithms, we have chosen this coherence based approach because it gave us promising results. And here is the block diagram of this coherence based approach. Uh, in the noise reduction stage two, we mainly considered three noise reduction algorithms, machine learning, wavelet transform and uh, adaptive filtering methods. And after feasibility analysis, we chose to implement 
wavelet transformation and adaptive filtering methods and under those main methods we tested a series of different approaches and uh, by the results uh, but considering the results which are obtained from objective and subjective matrix uh, we decided to use nlms uh, adaptive filter method along with the energy based uh, vat so in this figure you can see the adaptive filter method that we have implemented the final step of the speech enhancement process is the uh, gain adjustment of the hearing aid for that we have used a frequency shaping uh, function and here according to the according to each hearing impaired individual referring to his audiogram uh, we can put the hearing loss range and the gain that is needed to uh, make it or make the range audible to that patient and we uh, control the maximum output uh, to not to surpass the threshold of pain of the individual here you can see an audiogram of a patient with high frequency hearing loss and here is the gain adjusted signal uh, for that patient so here are the results that we got after evaluating noise reduction stage 1 and 2 and the first graph shows the psq value for 0 db snr inputs uh, after processing through stage 1 the coherence function and when the noise is uh, it is when the noise is present at 130 degrees and two noise sources are present at 90 and 180 degrees here we can see higher uh, psq improvements uh, actually those are for low snr values in the right uh, diagram it shows mos results we obtained using 40 subjects considering uh, different wavelet transformation approaches and adaptive filtering approaches and here we can see that nlms adaptive filter with energy based vad shows the best results for uh, high snr values so we decided to combine the coherence and nlms adaptive filtering algorithms to obtain a good performance in a wide range of snr values uh, as decided uh, we combined the two noise reduction approaches and here are the results of only stage 1 uh, after only stage 1 and after the combination of stage 1 and 2 uh, as the input signals we used 0 db snr signals with noise types for noise types a uh, multi talker babble and speech shaped noises uh, and the graph shows an average of snr and psq values of those uh, signals and when signal source is at 135 degrees and two signal source noise sources at 90 and 180 degrees and here we can not see Uh, increase in snr and psq values of the algorithm combination uh, but we could hear an improvement in the output of those uh, combination we, uh, so we decided to test the performance further using subjective matrices and here we can see the final results of our hearing aid as input signals we used four different scenarios by keeping a noise source at Uh, for 45 degrees 90 degrees 180 degrees and keeping two noise sources at 90 and 180 degrees uh, here we have considered the 5 db and 10 db snr values for all those four scenarios and due to pandemic situation we could perform the test for only 10 subjects and the two graphs shows the results separately um and we can see a slight improvement in the uh, mos values for uh, for the combination of stage 1 and stage 2 but these results may have less accuracy uh, due to the smaller sample size we have tested our prototype with a hearing impaired patient and he could repeat 60% of the given words and here is a, a short clip from the testing 
And in our project, we can conclude the following results that wavelet transform has shown good results in low SNR inputs. However, the performance is less compared to NLMS adaptive filters. And coherence method has shown the best results in low SNR inputs and NLMS adaptive filters has shown best results in high SNR inputs. And since the DSP results are acceptable, uh, the TMS320 C5535 chip and the TLV320 AI C320 for codec chip can be used for miniaturizing. Here are references. And thank you.